morning, Facebook Live. We're going to get it in one more time. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. This is Watchman Yahoo. This was also known as Pastor Derek Manor, only when I seek the script study and prayer line on his 13th day in um, August 2018. Let's get here, y'all. Let's get it in, y'all. Um, okay, well. Um, Alvin, good morning, good morning, Big Sean, Rita, Will, hallelujah, y'all hit y'all friends list, we finna do it one more time, okay, let's go to 2 Peter 2 and 9, 2 Peter 2 and 9. 2 Peter 2 and 9, look what it says. <clears throat> it says, Yah knoweth how to deliver the Yali out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Let me read that one more time. And Yah knoweth how to deliver the un the, and Yah know how to deliver the Yali out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Let me let me read a, a supporter scripture right quick. Uh, Acts thirteen and forty five. Look what it said. Acts thirteen and forty five. <clears throat> and when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy, and spake against those things which were spoken by Shaul contradicting and blaspheming. Then Saul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of Yahshua first had been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. <clears throat> Um, interesting that one can receive truth, reject it, put it from you, and that is a way um, that you count yourself, yourself, you count yourself unworthy of eternal life, count yourself unworthy of eternal life. That's super interesting. Um, so here we go. Yah know how to deliver the Yali out of temptation, also reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. W one good thing about the Most High is and, and I'm, I'm speaking of one good thing because you know he's all good through and through. But one good thing about the Most High is um, he knows how to reserve his children or present them blameless before his presence. There, there, there is no mystery for him in, in, in doing that. In fact, speaking with, um, speaking uh, to his children, right? He says that he will not suffer them to be tempted. Tim, how you doing, man? But he know how to. He 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 will not suffer them to be tempted above that which they're able. But with the temptation, make a way of escape that they might be able to bear it. So he definitely know how to deliver the yali out of temptation. Because he not gonna suffer to be tempted above that which you're able. But he also knows how to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to, to be punished. And one of the ways that he reserves the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished 
is by letting truth come to them. Because, uh, good morning, Terry. Uh, um, truth have a way of repelling the unyali. Truth all by itself. Truth all by when 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 Saul and Barnabas was dealing with you know Yah's children, they counted themselves unworthy of eternal life. Now, if you if you look at it, <clears throat> they were out preaching and teaching, and the crowds were starting to be attracted to truth. And so uh, the Jews was moved with envy. They were haters. And because of them being more interested in the crowd and fame and, you know, the accolades, they was into that type. They wasn't into the truth of the word. They wasn't into eternal life on that level. They were carnal. And what bothered them was the fact of, you know, it was a popularity contest to them. And because their hearts was wicked, they talked a good game, but their hearts inward, they wasn't cool. They began to hate and fight against truth. And then Saul and Barnabas said, okay, you, you count yourself unworthy. You, we, I preach to you first. You count yourself unworthy of eternal life. Folks don't know that like the rejection of truth based on something that's going on inside of you, the rejection of truth causes you, unbeknownst to yourself, that you're calling yourself unworthy of eternal life. It's really another way of, you know, what will you give in exchange for your soul? And when you trade your soul in for something, you're counting yourself unworthy of eternal life because you think that the stuff, the thing, the popularity is more important. The man, the woman that 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 you know that you want to be a companion with is more important. Your carnal situation is more important. You got to be careful with how you think. You have to be careful with the decisions you make. You got to be careful. Because decisions will exalt itself against the knowledge of Yah. You can make decisions, carnal decisions, uh, to choose your way as opposed to Yahweh. You can choose, you can choose to seek to save your life unbeknownst to yourself. Decisions. You, you can watch TV or pray. And every time you choose TV, you, you, unbeknownst to you, you could be counting yourself unworthy of eternal life without even knowing it. Because you're rejecting Yah, you're rejecting truth. The word come to save you, to perfect you, and to change you. And our, our, our fleshly desires will exalt itself against what the word say. The word has a purpose. And it is able to present us blameless because it's going to come and clean us up. But when you have earthly desires to go against that word, you have a reason to continue to fornicate. You have a reason to continue to commit adultery. You have a reason to cuss folks out. You have a reason, but the word will come and say, don't do that. The word says, let not filthy communications come out of your mouth. The word is ministering to you life. But when you have an, alter, an ulterior motive, good morning, Perry, Sister Don. When you have, when you have, when you have an ulterior motive, you got to kill it before it kill you. You got, you got to kill your ulterior motive. Religious folks coming to him, they don't just arbitrarily reject the truth of the word. Folks is just not arbitrarily. Very few. It's not too often that you will find someone to just reject the word for no reason. They have a reason. They have a reason why they can't see this particular truth. And because it, 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 if that truth will 
cramp their style some kind of way. That 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 truth will go against something that they want to do. And the Most High know how to provoke to preserve those that really love Him. When you really love Him. There's nothing that it can exalt itself against the knowledge of Yah in your life. Because you're going to choose the word over yourself. You'll choose the word over your, your, your pride. You'll choose the word over your loneliness. You'll choose the word over your, your, your appetite. you just choose the word over your, over your tiredness. Sleep can't stop those that belong to Yah because, because if Yah say get up and teach or if Yah say get up and drive over there to fellowship, if Yah say do it, those that belong to him is going to choose his word, going to choose what he say over the circumstance. See, see people miss out and, and, and judge themselves unworthy of eternal life based on uh, uh, their personal agenda. But when you love when you love Yah, you're not going to let uh, the circumstances overthrow you, overthrow what he say. So yeah, Yah know of how to deliver, deliver the Yahli out of temptation. And how he does it, simplicity. It's through he'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you how to handle the situation. He'll tell you to stay away from them. Be be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. He'll tell you to come out from among them, be separate, stay away from that religious clique. He'll tell you to stand on truth no matter what, even if, if it feel like you're standing by yourself. Just like he know how to deliver the yali out of temptation, he also know how to reserve the unjust onto the day of judgment to be punished. He knows how. He know what to do to Pharaoh. He didn't force Pharaoh like 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 people think. He uh, 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 Pharaoh had an ulterior motive to go against the word. Pharaoh had a reason not to let the, the children of Israel go. He was getting he's making money off them. He was he's running his empire off their backs, and, and he didn't want to let them go. So when the word says that the most high hardened his heart, you got to realize what the most high is. He's the word. And when the word comes to somebody that 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 is carnal, they're going to reject it. The word itself hardens carnal's carnal hearts. Period. Y'all tell you what to do, you ain't going to do it. That's just like me say a little bad kid, a little hard-headed kid that wasn't raised right. You say, come here. And they run the opposite way. I already know that some of them say, come here, his heart going to be hard and he's going to run the other way. I know him. He's carnal per se. That, you can use that as a parable. That That's the, the, the word when I come here. I already know what he's going to do. He's going to turn and run. Put that down. Don't touch that. I already know he's going to go touch it. Yah is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with Yah and the word was Yah. Yah will tell you what to do. Leave him alone. That makes some people grab him tighter. You ain't going to break me and my man up. Okay. So, just like Yah knows how to deliver the Yali out of temptation, he also knows how to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. By just telling them what's right to do, and they're going to do what's wrong. And we got to guard our hearts. We got to make sure that we don't have no ulterior motives that cause us to count ourselves unworthy of eternal life. Because the word is our very eternal life. The willingness to accept the word. The word came in the form of what they call the gospel. It was tagged as the gospel. But it's just the word. But it was tagged as the gospel. It, it described the death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah. But, but, but believing in it then in turn describes our death, burial, and resurrection. We follow suit. Baptize in his death and get up like he did. The power of the Father raised him up and will raise us up. If you reject that, 
then you're not going to be baptized into his death and then resurrected. See how he uh, delivers the Yali out of temptation is he'll tell them, don't do that. Read, study, pray, show up or blow up. He'll let you know what to do. He stood at the door and knocked. He didn't kick the door in. We got to really understand that the gospel works for a, 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 a rejuvenated heart. Someone that, that, that will willingly take down that the word be exalted. Word teaches, Mashiach said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men. If I'm lifted up. Again, you got to know what he is. He's the word. He was lifted up in the body. He was lifted up in the body to, to, to hang on that tree for our sins. And now that's, that, that scripture is still applicable, but, but it's not dealing with the flesh no more. If you lift up the word, he'll draw all men. The body is out of here. So when you lift up the word, and you got to lift up the word not only verbally for others to be saved, but you got to allow the word to be lifted up in your heart, in your mind, meditating in the word both day and night. What did Yah tell you to do? What did Yah tell you to do? And what did Yah tell you not to do? What is he telling you to stop doing? And what is he telling you to start doing? Because if you stop doing what he told you to stop doing and start doing what he told you to start doing, then he's delivering you out of temptation because temptation will tell you not to do what he say. That's the temptation. The temptation, the serpent came to tempt Eve not to do what the Most High said. This is like layman terms, y'all. Get beyond the religious piece of looking at Jesus on the cross. Get beyond that. Get beyond uh, looking at Yahushua on the tree, to be honest with you. But get beyond that. That's a religious state of mind. We don't know him after the flesh no more. We don't know Yahushua after the flesh no more. We know him according to the spirit. The word. That's why he said the words that I speak unto you are spirit and life. We know him after the word now. He was the word made flesh. The flesh is gone. Now we know him after the word. And if you know the word, that word is able to deliver you out of temptation. Because temptation is the, the, the desire to go against the word. Like Adam and Eve did. They went against the word and was pronounced dead. We got to hide the word in our heart that we might not sin against it. Bottom line, you can't cuss them out. You can't do, you can't do what you want to do and be saved. You cannot do what you want to do and be saved. Unfortunately, when the word come for some people, the reservation of the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished is Second Peter two and nine, y'all. But the, the the reservation, the unjust has a reservation for judgment day to be punished, and is reserved in the hearts of those that reject the word. That's how he reserves them. What separates the goat? from the sheep or the sheep from the goat is the word. You have, the word has went out of sore with the soul. Goats hate the word. Goats is not, is they're going to repel from the word. They're not going to allow the word to come in their life and tell them what to do. They have more of a I'm grown state of mind. And they show love to put, to take a religious position that will enable them to do whatever the heck they want to do and still go to heaven. That's, that, 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 that is the reservation. Do you have a reservation to the day of judgment to be punished? All you got to do is look at how you treat the word. What is your relationship with what the Most High say? If the Most High told you to kick them out, you can't do that with them. Stay away from them. Can he tell you that? Because the inability to receive truth, to be obedient to truth, not just receive it verbally, you know what? How many of y'all know people that have a verbal relationship with the Most High? It's not, it's, it's, it's not 
in a lifestyle. Apostle, bless you. Thank you for chiming in. But how many of y'all know people that have a verbal relationship with the Most High? What, and, and, and what establishes a verbal relationship with the Most High is, is believing <clears throat> that, that Jesus did it all. <laughs> that Jesus did it all so you ain't got to do nothing. You moving forward is just verbal. You, you, don't, you don't have to obey. You don't have to do what he say. You have a, a reservation for the day of judgment to be punished. But how he, how he delivers the Yali out of temptation is sending them the word. Same thing that, 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 that saves you condemns others. He's not preaching two different gospels. When you read a Yachanan 8, or they call him St. John, or John 8, right? And the conversation he was having uh, with the Pharisees, some of the Jews believed. And he said, if you continue in my truth, he said, you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He let him know, if you continue, if you continue, you'll be my disciples. But that same word had the majority of the crowd upset. They was rejecting it. He wasn't preaching two different gospels. He was preaching one. And that word itself, that word itself was, um, Condemning some and giving eternal life to others all at the same time. Mute your phone, mother, please. Bless you. But, 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 but the, it was the same word. And that's exactly what the word is doing now. It is reserving some unto the day of judgment to be punished while some uh, uh, simultaneously is saving others. Is delivering others out of temptation. It's, 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 that, that's, that's basically how it works. And y'all know how to deliver the Yali out of temptation. And he reserves the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. And then if you just watch methodology, that's why we got to study. If you look at methodology, uh, Paul and Barnabas went out and they were preaching. And, and, and because uh, the religious folks, again, remember them ul ulterior motives. People reject truth. Nine times out of ten because they have an ulterior motive. The word is going to come and expose their relationship. And they want to live in sin. The word will come and cost them some money. And they, and they don't want y'all to, they don't, they don't, they don't, they, don't, they, they ain't on that level. They want, they, they going to govern their money. They have an ulterior motive. Some, some folks tired of being lonely. And you come preaching that, they're going to get tired of you. And, they, and, they, and they're going to reject truth. And the rejection of the truth is the reservation uh, uh, for the unjust uh, to, 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 to show up at the day of judgment to be punished. For the rejection of truth. And keep in mind, it's the same truth. that the, the, the smaller crowd in the crowd, he, he's calling the people out of a people. A smaller crowd will receive truth gladly and change, make the necessary adjustments, continue to grow in what they call grace. The unmerited favor of the Most High. Oh, it's the truth, Nicole. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. He knows how to deliver. He know how. We, we think it's complicated. It's super. It's super simple. You got six kids right there. And you know four of them don't have a heart for, 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 for instruction. And two do. So you say, you say, you, you don't tell them what you want. You say, come here. You finna get them treats. You say, come here. You only got two treats and, and there's six kids standing there. Because you know four of them gonna run the other direction. And two gonna come. So you saying, come here. Harden the hearts of the four that don't have no upbringing. But the two obedient ones, you knew they was coming. See, y'all don't see as man see. Man look on the outer appearance. Y'all look at the heart. Y'all knew he was dealing with when he was dealing with Pharaoh. It's not his will that any should perish, but all come unto repentance. Now, I could get bigger on the, the whole theological principle where people go wrong when they study Romans uh, the ninth chapter, thinking that uh, Yah forced him 
uh, 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 to harden his heart that forced him so he can be destroyed. He, I, I'm not gonna get too deep into that right now. But that you don't know the word. The word don't contradict itself. It don't say on one one sense. It say that it's not his will that any should perish, but all come unto repentance. And then in another sense, he's forcing people hard in their heart that they don't receive truth. It don't work like that. The truth of the matter, the carnal mind, I'm going to deal with it a little bit, y'all. But the, the truth is the carnal mind is enmity against Yah. There's a state of mind that if Yah tell you to do something, that state of mind ain't going to do it. It's enmity, and enmity means hostile. It's enmity against Yah. It's not subject to the law of Yah, neither indeed can be. Good to see you, Dave. Long time, man, David. But, but, but so there's a state of mind that is allergic to what Yah say, period. And he hardened his heart because he's the word. He said, let my people go. He already knew what he was going to do. Because Pharaoh had an ulterior motive. Before Paul and Barnabas told those Jews, it was meet for me to bring the gospel to you first. But seeing you have put it away from yourself and count yourself unworthy of eternal life, I'm going to the Gentiles. It's the same principle. That principle is still working right now. It's working in every individual's life. Those that will submit, that will choose the word over their circumstance. There's a circumstance that will come that's either going to continue your furtherance in eternal life or you can, you, you're, it's a fork in the road. You can reject truth because you want to stay in the bed. You want to get high. You want to run with people you shouldn't run with. The word says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers because you are an unbeliever too if you hang it with them. They reject the word, you got to be rejecting it too. You wouldn't even be hanging with them if, 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 if uh, 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 you were rejecting truth because the word taught you to come out from among them and be separate. Y'all will get you together. He said, save yourself from this untoward generation. You got to get saved. Then he'll send you back like he did Moses. He'll send you back when you rooted and grounded and settled in truth. And when you go back, you're not going to be cussing with them. You're not going to get high with them. You're not going to get drunk with them. And you're not going to sleep with them. You're not going to be cussing folks out with them. You're going to come as the light. Shining in the darkness that people can see your good works and magnify your father which is in heaven. See, y'all know it. We, we gleaning y'all from 2 Peter 2 and 9. And y'all know of how to deliver the Yali out of temptation. He began to work in you. He said, I'm going to finish it. He know, he know how to deliver the Yali out of temptation. He know exactly how. And he, and he already set the precedent of how he do it through the word. For y'all so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. He gave his son, he gave the body, he gave the human being as the sacrifice that would hang on that tree for your sins. But what was in the son is what you believe in. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his son, he gave his body, and whosoever believeth in him, what was in him? The word. Because it was the word that was made flesh. The flesh, the human, was that lamb that died on the tree. That we could receive what was in the lamb, which was the word, because it was the word that was made flesh. I'm going to be redundant, y'all. <laughs> I'm going to be redundant till you get it. You got to come from up under that, that stinking thinking, that Catholicism that passes the responsibility. Y'all know how to deliver the... The, the, how to deliver the Yali out of temptation. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. How he does it, he make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. The way of escape is to obey him. To obey the word, to, to hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against him. The might part is you might sin against him because you might choose to be rebellious. And if you stay in your rebellion, you, that's your reservation onto the day of judgment to be punished. Stay in the bed with him. Stay lying. Stay cussing. Stay in church, but just be a hypocrite. Having a form of yali that's denying the power thereof. Stay in church. And be a, a phony. And, and it's jacked up when you became a phony because you're sitting up under a false ministry. 
uh, up under a false preacher that will give you a false sense of security that you don't even have. Ain't no security in sin. Ain't no security in walking in rebellion, shifting the, the responsibility. The word said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You can't shift the responsibility. You can cuss because Jesus didn't. <laughs> you can sleep with him because Jesus didn't. <laughs> you ain't got this symbol because, because, because Jesus assembled. That twisted theology. You're supposed to be his disciple. You're supposed to be mimicking the Mashiach, Yahusha, his real name. You're supposed to be mimicking him. If, you, if you're his disciple, you're supposed to be mimicking him, following him, doing what he did. Y'all know how? Y'all know how to deliver the Yali out of temptation. And it's not a mystery. It's not mystical on that level. He do it by his word. Yeah. That same word that Adam went against, he sent it back. He came down 42 generations, was born of a virgin. It was the word that was made flesh. John 1 and 14. It was the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. It was the word. Same word. And that word can give eternal life because going against it gives eternal death. For the wage of sin, sin is going against the word. The wage of sin is death. Yeah. Y'all know how to deliver you out of temptation. He gonna say, don't do that. And the word is living inside of you and you shall receive power after the Ruach HaKadosh has come upon you, when that incorruptible seed, that living word is inside of you, it gives you the ability to obey it. It quickened you and made your spirit alive and aware of Yah. You can't obey it. you got to deny yourself because your temptation, your flesh is going to be raising itself up against what Yah say because it's carnal. We have a carnal nature, an Adam nature that's enmity, hostile against Yah. That nature say sleep with him. That evil nature say, cuss them out. That evil nature say, go to the club. That evil nature say, steal it. Uh, they dropped it. They don't see it. Pick it up and keep it. You need, that's your blessing. That's that carnal evil nature. And if you abide in this evil nature over here, because you've been made new. If you abide in this evil nature right here, that's your reservation. Onto judgment. To be punished. To be punished. To be punished. Yeah. To be punished. That's your reservation to be punished. But y'all knoweth how. Y'all read it. Second Peter 2 and 9, y'all. Y'all y'all know how to deliver the Yali. Those that obey him, that love him, the true believer, out of temptation. I hope that was plain. Let's pray. Spirit of the Most High, we love you and thank you for this. Sermonette, short message, and we pray that it was filled with truth, enough truth to wake your children up, to come out of that Catholicized state of mind, to, to come out of religion, to walk in relationship, to become a new creation in you. We pray that the word was delivered according to the leading of your spirit, and that it go continue to rescue your children. And we trust and believe that it was done. In the master's name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we humbly pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and all may. Bless you. I'm trying to see who that is. Is it easily, easily? Dakota, Dakota, bless you. Thanks for chiming in. That was the lesson. Look, I say it redundantly because we need to get the word circulating more if it's true. If it's true, easiest thing to do is go witnessing. He compelled us all to go witnessing. All you got to do is push the share button for now. Let your fingers do the walking through the yellow pages. Remember that? Let your fingers do the witnessing on your social media by just pushing share. If the lesson blessed you, then definitely you would then have a revelation that it could bless somebody else. Real talk. Why don't y'all push share? And um, if... The if the if if the lesson 
has been, the lessons have been a blessing to you, and you subscribe that this is a, a, a good ministry, so we can use the sewing. We do a lot in the community. We work with the kids. We do all kinds of stuff, and we need resources. We need financial support in order to continue to do this. Uh, bless you, bless you, bless you, Scott. Bless you. But um, we, need, we need financial support. Take it personal because I'm talking directly to you. We need uh, financial support. And so go to PayPal and put in DerekMan5857 at Yahoo.com. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-M-A-N-N -N, 5857 at Yahoo.com. I know a uh, cult reader B is going to post it. All y'all got to do is go to PayPal and, and give a blessing. I think it's the ministry is good ground. I believe it is. Prayerfully, you do too. And if you do, sow into it. Um, We're on the conference line at 302-202-1102, extension 815-648. Again, 302-202-1102, extension 815-648. Come chop it up with us. We'll be on the conference line Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can hang out with us. Absolutely love each and every one of you. Continue to pray for me as I pray for you. Y'all be Baruch and um, Barack Shalom. Oh, go to my YouTube page and, and subscribe. Y'all be Baruch. Shalom. Let me leave a Facebook Live, please.